It is game day here on Birds 365. Jody Mack with Bill Colorado in for John McMullen. Oh, no, wait. There's John McMullen live from Kansas City in uh, his plush hotel room. Good man there. Springing for you there, big guy. Uh, J Mack made it safe and sound. Uh, need your take on personal reasons. Not you as to why you weren't here for the start of the show. No, I mean... Uh, the Eagles defensive end, Derek Barnett, not going to play tonight due to personal reasons. <clears throat> you got any insight? You got any uh, skinny? You got any dirt on that particular situation? Uh, no dirt necessarily, other than I, I think everybody's assessments of the situation are probably correct in that uh, Derek's not very happy right now. Derek um, understands that uh, his role is gone. And I don't think he's too happy about it. Now, that's not to say, um, you know, something couldn't have happened. uh, But I did see him trying to think of what day it is. We're Monday, uh, Friday. I I saw him at the Novacare Complex at the back of the auditorium. Um, So, you know, anything can happen at any time. But I, I think the timing of before the buy and it was a healthy scratch and you and I had speculated and, you know, was that going to be an ongoing thing? Mm, I'm starting to think it's going to be an ongoing thing. But Johnny, what could Derek Barnett possibly be upset about when the guy's got more penalties in his career than he does sacks? They've given him every opportunity. What is he upset about? He hasn't proven it on the field. Yeah, I mean, that's fair, but, you know, uh, he is a human being and, uh, you know, he he gets criticized a lot and some people take it better than others. And I don't think he's taking it well right now. And I think he sees the end of the road in Philadelphia. Um, And it is what it is. I mean, if you go back to what he was billed as as the first round pick in 2017 and breaking all reggie white sack records at tennessee you know that right alone was kind of silly but that's where people started and now it looks like where it's going to end and you're right the eagles have have constantly talked about him and 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 propped him up and said he's more valuable than people outside the building realize um why? Why? Because he's a human being and he's taking it the way he's taking it. Maybe he's listening to the show and all the hate Jody spews at him. Um, <laughs> Jody's not the only one. He gets it from uh, all quarters. But uh, yeah, sometimes, you know, it happens all in every city. There's certain players that, uh, you know, I remember Nate Gary here got a lot of criticism and, and, it's not easy for those players generally, but when you have a first round pick who doesn't work out and Jalen Rager is probably a better example. I mean, Jalen Rager is a nice kid, but he didn't perform and he got shot upon by, by critics constantly. So it's not fun for those guys, certainly, but it is a bottom line business and everybody knows it and you get paid yeah. a lot of money and that's part of it. Yeah, it really sucks, Bill, when hate meets facts and they just uh, <laughs> happen to point out the fact that a guy can't play. Yep. And they made a mistake when they brought him back on the contract again last time. Sorry if you consider that hate. I consider those facts. Um, let's talk facts, Johnny Mac. Patrick Mahomes against Jalen Hurts. Last year's MVP against last year's runner-up. Right now, this year's MVP leader by this much over Jalen Hurts. Whoever wins this game is going to be the, I don't want to say runaway, but significant leader in the MVP, doesn't it? And I love a motivated Jalen Hurts. When Jalen Hurts is motivated, he plays dynamite football. He won't tell us this, and we'll get to judge his condition of his knee for ourselves when he gets out there on the field. You'll have a better look from the press box than us at home watching on TV. I like the fact that Jalen Hurts is coming into this game with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. How about you? I think Jalen Hurts lives his life with a chip on his shoulder. I, I think that's sort of been embedded into his psyche as a player um, for whatever reason. And it, 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 it goes long before Philadelphia or the draft. And, 
I think it even goes long before Alabama and getting benched there. Um, he's, you know, we've talked about a lot. He's the, you know, I just talked about players taking things the wrong way, perhaps. He's the opposite, uh, you know, and maybe it stems from his um, upbringing as a coach's son. Nick Sirianni talks about that a lot. That's what they have in common. So they're used to being criticized. They're used to taking constructive criticism in a, in a positive fashion instead of a negative fashion. Um, so I don't think he's got a chip on his shoulder because he wants to win the MVP from Patrick Mahomes. I think he's got a chip on his shoulder because there's always going to be, because of his style of play, uh, there's always going to be critics. And he, he, and he does a good job of avoiding that in public, but he knows it and he, he uses that as fuel. Um, and Nick Sirianni talks about it all the time. If you use something, even if it's not true, if you use it in a positive way, great. If it, mm -hmm. if it motivates you, if it takes you in a negative direction, it's not great. So, uh, but he, he, he takes everything in a positive direction. I think that's fair to say. And we know this offensive staff loves to throw the football. We've seen it week after week. Tonight, going up against a Chiefs defense that's very good against the pass, not as great against the run. What do you think the offensive game plan is tonight, John? Um, I, I think a lot of it depends on Jalen's health. And he uh, got rid of the knee sleeve uh, coming back from the bye. So hopefully he's um, – Hopefully he's healthier. Hopefully the RPO is back in the offense. And if it is, then it comes down to the usual, usual eagle psyche, which is basically, what are you going to do? All right, we'll take this. Um, if you're going to do that, we'll take this. So, you know, I always say, and people ask me this every week, Bill, every week, is it going to be a run, uh, run first game plan, pass first game plan? It's Jalen Hurts' first game plan. It always is, um, and that's what the Eagles are, and they don't care about the other team. There's a level of haughtiness to this team. I think sometimes too much, but you could argue they've earned it. So, you know, basically we ask Nick Sirianni every week, what do you like? What do you like? What matchup do you like? Almost every week ad nauseum, he says, our offensive line, our receivers. And they don't give a rat's you-know-what about who, who the other team has because they think they have an advantage every single week. As as I would say pretty much, well, they should because uh, yeah. they are as talented units as they are. That being said, analytics factored in. Coin toss tonight. Comes up Eagles. Nick Sirianni's choice would be to defer and or take the ball. See, it is he loves the matchup of his offensive line week in and week out. He loves his wide receivers week in and week out. Wouldn't you want to take the ball first and go, let's establish where we have the dominance in this game, Johnny Mac? Yeah, you can keep running that up the flagpole, Jody. Ain't happening. Uh, I don't even think it has to do with analytics. It's just you know, it really stems for Bill Belichick sort of sandwiching the, the first half and the, and the third quarter with scores. If you could do that, you're going to win virtually every game. Now, it's obviously easier said than done, but that's why everybody defers. In the case of the Eagles, I, I you know, in this particular game, I mean, as strange as it sounds, the Kansas City offense has been the one that's struggling for the past four or five games and the Kansas city defense has been carrying them. I, we typically don't say that, but this is not the typical chiefs where you're worried about them putting up 35 points. And if you do give up 35 points, you're going to lose the game and you probably deserve to lose the game because this has not been an explosive offense over recent weeks. And you mentioned that chiefs defense. We all know how good Chris Jones is. Who else has impressed you on that side of the ball for Kansas City? Uh, Trent McDuffie, um, I think most notably. I, you know, there's a lot of talk about that secondary and how much it, how much it's been improved, 
and all of that is true. Um, and they played a, a, a lot of rookies uh, and very young players in, in, in winning the Super Bowl. Now they're sort of garnering the, the good effects of, of that particular um, uh, experience that those guys had on such a big stage and were able to persevere. But he's the one guy who I think has showed up and he's just a good player. Um, there's, there's, you know, you can say, like we said a lot with the Eagles and their fronts, it, it's so good at times it makes the, the back seven look better than it typically does. And, and, and maybe it would be in other situations. Same thing with Chris Jones uh, to a lesser extent, but he's just, McDuffie's just flat out good. And, you know, there are other, I would say they're, if we're using the NBA mentality, uh, they're, they're, the third of the big three would be <clears throat> Nick Bolton, who was injured right now, but Willie Gay has kind of stepped up as well. So he's, he's playing well. So they have three, you know, they have playmakers on all three levels. And that's generally what you see um, when you have good defenses. And that's what Kansas City right has right now. And I should add George Karloftis because he's turned into a, a real big, edge rusher for them and a nice compliment to Chris Jones up front. Um, so it's very good, very talented defense. Off the old conversations aside, that would be swift conversations. Um, the Kansas City tight end scares the snot out of me coming into this game. Uh, the Eagles have had problems covering tight ends all year long, and now they have to try and contain the best tight end on the planet. What are they going to throw at them, Johnny Mack? Or uh, is there a uh, defense that they've been holding back that uh, Sean decides been waiting to spring on us and or a way to at least limit a tight end, the best tight end in football? Or is this going to be just hold your breath every time Kelsey goes out for a pass? Um, yeah, probably hold your breath. <laughs> no, they're not rolling out. They're not saving game plans uh, uh, for this time of year. Um, now, I think they'll get a little bit better, as we said. You know, uh, Kevin Byard has a history of, of playing Travis Kelsey well, or at least as well as you can uh, at times in the past in Tennessee. They've matched up. Um, and, and he's getting more comfortable the more he plays, obviously. He should get a little bit more comfortable, should get incrementally better. Uh, and then... Uh, Bradley Roby's back in the slot, so that should help as well, at least settle down. So now you have four players, four of the five, Slade, Bradbury, uh, Roby, Byer, just high IQ, know how to play. Maybe they're not as good as they once were, um, but they're not going to make egregious mistakes, and, and that alone I think should help uh, the Eagles – uh, passing defense. And the second part is, you know, it's it's at least nice to try to deal with uh, Travis Kelsey when you don't have to worry about a Tyreek Hill or, or a big-time receiver as well. Uh, so that should help. And I think that's sort of what Kansas City and Andy Reid is fighting through right now, trying to figure out that second guy or at least somebody who can threaten opposing defenses. Sticking with that defense, John, we were all hopeful in the Super Bowl the Eagles were going to be able to get after Patrick Mahomes. Weren't able to do it. We know this Kansas City Chiefs offense, some of it's their offensive line, a lot of it's Patrick Mahomes, number one in the league and giving up sacks. Can this Eagles D-line get to Patrick Mahomes tonight? No, not in the conventional fashion. I mean, he's not – He's Patrick Mahomes is – I just talked about high football IQ. He, he's that on the opposite side. He's 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 Peyton Manning. He's Tom Brady. He's too smart. He's not going to take a six sack game. Ain't going to happen. Uh, the ball's going to come out um, when he wants it to come out, and he's going to be very judicious when he extends plays. And you know, if you watch the game last night, Josh Dobbs, you know, the the clock struck midnight. He couldn't deal with the pressure. Uh, Patrick can deal with the pressure. So um, 
he he understands when he needs to get rid of the football, when he can extend plays. Um, and you're not going to get a big sack game. Now, can you disrupt him? Yes, but that's more esoteric. And that's, I always go back to the Giants winning Super Bowls against the Patriots. And people talk about the helmet catch and uh, Asante Samuel and blah, 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 blah. The Giants won both of those Super Bowls because of their front. And, and mainly interior pressure right up the middle on, on Tom Brady. Can the Eagles do that with Jalen Carter and company? Yes. But as far as when you pick up the box score tomorrow and we're talking, you're not going to see a lot of sacks. Uh, agreed. But this is where, and you and I love talking about this, I'll give you the benefit now. Pressures could be key. Make Mahomes throw it earlier than he wants to throw it. And maybe he's not as deadly or as accurate as he is. You know, I believe in the sack more with the pressure. You give more pre credits for pressures. Pressures could be key tonight if they get Mahomes getting out, getting it out even earlier than he wants to. All right, Johnny Mac, you got to go on the record here, brother. Got to make a pick on tonight's game. Eagles, Chiefs, what's that final score going to look like? Yeah, I, I, I you know, I, it's hard for me to pick against the Eagles at this stage. It's it's a very difficult environment. You know, I landed here last night. You see that, you know, there's certain cities and you're like, eh, yeah, you know, the Eagles are going to have no problem. This is not one of them. Uh, it's going to be a tough environment. Uh, they love their football team here as well they should with all the success. You see Patrick Mahomes stuff, the Chiefs stuff from the moment you step off the airplane. Um, it's a little bit different here. It's a little bit tough. I'm wavering. I'm wavering, but I'm still picking the Eagles. And I think it's going to be a little bit lower scoring than people expect probably because they're talking about Patrick. what we talked about, Patrick Mahomes and Jalen Hurts and MVP. Um, but I think it's going to be 23-ish. 16-ish Eagles. 3 16 Eagles. All right. Uh, yeah, you and I are in disagreement on the overall way the game's going to play. I think it's going to be higher scoring than most people think. And it's going to rain. I, I'm not sure it's going to rain a little bit. Maybe that factors into it as well. Uh, was it raining when you got off the plane? Uh, no, it was not. No no rain, but it's supposed to it rain. It had rained. It was wet, but it wasn't raining okay. uh, when I got off the plane. All right, Johnny Mac, uh, hope to have you back on here tomorrow. Seems like the Wi-Fi held up. Appreciate you jumping in. Uh, we will talk in the morning. Enjoy the game tonight, bud. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks for filling in, Bill. No problem. I'll probably see you tonight on the pregame show right here on Jacob Sports. All right, let's do it. There you thanks, go. guys. Pregame stuff here on Jacob Sports. Oh, good that you brought that up, Bill. Thank you very much because part of that coverage will be Mark Barzetta. Farzee's going to jump in with us next. You got him on the Farsi show and the pregame show here on Jacob uh, Sports for the Eagles. He'll be on tonight. He'll be on next here on Birds 365.